For a lot of people in Cardano, it seems like there's always been this sense that they were anxiously waiting to be acknowledged by the rest of the crypto space, as if somehow there would be a day when all the Bitcoin and Ethereum maximalists would get together in the crypto congressional chambers and declare that the doors of their little sanctuaries would be opened to Cardano from that day going forward. This is not going to happen. This was never going to happen. They don't even like each other. They certainly don't like us. But being allowed through their doors isn't what we need. It's not what we ever needed. What we need is to open our own doors to the new users who will come into crypto and to make sure that our doorway is the most attractive one out there. Ready? Let's go. Today, we are going to discuss this idea about who Cardano should be focused on, excellent news around ledger support of our ecosystem, the Sunday Swap July dev update, and a mysterious tweet related to Pavia. This beautiful rustic town looks to you like the kind of place that definitely parties after sunset, or if you're finding value in these videos each weekday. Please consider delegating to the Army of Spies stake pool ticker AOS. Guys, I think our friendly Cardano well hit it on the head here. They were never going to let us into their little clubhouses. That was something that was never going to happen. But even the idea of being let into their little circles is sort of like a tree that bears no fruit and provides no shade. There's no real prize there. Bitcoin never evolves. They don't even have smart contracts. And Ethereum, Ethereum is about to go through this transformation. They'll go through this metamorphosis where they'll become this beautiful butterfly and spread their wings. However, <laughs> this, <laughs> this butterfly has a version of staking that is not unlike our traditional banking system in that if you're going to be staking, if you're going to be delegating in Ethereum, you have to give up custody of your funds. Does anything sound less cypherpunk? Does anything less sound less crypto than I need you to give up custody of your funds in order to delegate in order to be a part of the validation of the chain. That's the least crypto thing I've ever heard. This is like if Tom Cruise tried to convince everyone he was a samurai. Okay, wait. So that that movie that movie probably sold a lot of tickets. So you know what I'm saying though. It's ridiculous. One of the pillars of crypto is unbanking yourself. That was one of the big things that was super attractive about crypto in the early days, that you could have custody of your own funds just by making sure you and you alone knew your private key. Only you would have access to your funds. What Ethereum is being forced to do by their decision to employ slashing in their staking system, which means they have to have the delegators give up custody of the funds. By making that fundamental, I would, I would argue, poor choice, Ethereum has doomed themselves to this future where they have to look like the bank. Because to a lot of people coming to crypto, it's going to feel a lot like depositing your funds at a bank. You give up custody in order to get a return. That sounds like the traditional banking system. Only it's more like the traditional banking system, all the bad things in the traditional banking system, plus some other bad things that are additional. Sort of like the picture we painted uh, several episodes ago. It's more like you're banking at a bank where occasionally, if the bank makes a mistake, the Federal Reserve sends in a guy with a flamethrower to burn up all the money in the vault just to punish the bank and its depositors for letting the bank make a mistake. That's the kind of banking system that ETH is employing. And they're already seeing some unintended, very negative consequences, like the rise of Lido. Because they don't have liquid staking in Ethereum, of course, someone was going to come along and provide liquid staking with these sort of staking derivative instruments, uh, 
which uh, which Lido is c- currently offering. And because they're offering that, they've grown to be a huge percentage of the staking in the Ethereum system. They have kind of a ridiculous way. They're trying to paint themselves as extremely decentralized. Um, but when one party controls that much of the delegated ether, you've definitely got a problem. And that's on top, it's caused by it, but it's also on top of this unbanking yourself by depositing your funds in a new kind of bank problem they've got. As people come into crypto, they're going to be faced with these choices. You've got one very large cap crypto ecosystem, Ethereum, where you can delegate and participate in proof of stake, but you have to give up custody. And then you've got Cardano, where you can keep the funds on a hardware wallet completely secure or as completely secure as we can really get in crypto today. One of those is very attractive and the other one is not. Sure, you could argue the people who are in Ethereum now will gladly give up custody in order to delegate their funds. And that is true. That's because they don't really have any other choice. All these maximalists in all of these ecosystems, to one degree or another, view themselves as early adopters who are going to reap the rewards of their early adoption. If you're, if you're by your own definition, an early adopter of Ethereum, Ethereum is going to evolve into this, whether you want it to or not. So the only way for you to get to that point in the future where you think you're going to reap the rewards of your early adoption is by going along with this and participating in whatever this ETH proof of stake thing becomes. They've got no choice. They've kind of just got to tough it out. You could also argue, hey, uh, we're talking about mainstream adoption here. And if there's one thing the mainstream is comfortable with, it's putting their money in a bank. That is true. There are a huge number of people that we all know who, you know, that's virtually everyone we know in real life is comfortable with putting their money in a bank if they're in a jurisdiction that has uh, uh, stability in banking services, if there's no fear of the bank confiscating their funds of any kind of bank balance like we've discussed uh, in the context of the Cyprus financial crisis. But those aren't really the people who come into crypto. I know a lot of people who would who, who are 1 million percent comfortable with depositing their money in a bank, even knowing full well that it's a fractional reserve system and their money's being lent out and the bank doesn't even actually have their money. It's just it's just the system they've always been accustomed to. Those aren't the people who are going to come into crypto. They would never be comfortable with crypto. They're comfortable with banking. The people who come into crypto are people who are looking for an alternative to the old system. What Ethereum has done is replicate the old system. But the people who coming into crypto, people who would be, would be comfortable with the old system are never going to leave the old system. Those are the people who are going to stay in the traditional finance system forever. The people coming into crypto are looking for something different, not a watered down cryptographic clone of the old arrangements. There's no denying that Ethereum is the big player. They're the big player in the Gen 3 blockchain space. At the second they have proof of stake, they're going to be the biggest proof of stake blockchain with smart contracts. And that's going to remain the case for a while. But with this transformation, they're losing their connection to one of the big pieces of the soul of crypto. By giving up this self-custody piece, they're they're sort of turning away from one of the big pieces of the ethos of crypto, and that's going to be to Cardano's advantage. While I know I just said that Bitcoin and Ethereum are never going to open their doors to us, guess who is? Pretty much everybody else in the crypto space, like Ledger. Ledger is in the business of making money. So as Cardano gets bigger and bigger, they're going to embrace Cardano more and more. Like with this announcement, Ledger expands Cardano support, can now manage 100 native tokens with Ledger Live. I remember when we were in this big struggle to get Ledger integration with staking, 
just to get ledger integration with ADA so that we could stake from our ledgers. That was that was a big goal. That was a big uh, uh, milestone. We could actually just stake our ADA off our ledgers. That was a big improvement. Now we're talking about having 100 different Cardano native tokens on Ledger. I remember not too long ago when the idea of there even being 100 native tokens on Cardano seemed far-fetched. And now here we are. So they've got a nice list of all the tokens. And I mean, it's pretty much it's pretty much all the big tokens you would expect. I mean, we've got Milk, Meld, Snow, Sunday, World Mobile. Um, it's it's Min Swap. It's it's pretty hard to think of a non super niche small community token that's that's not on this list i'm sure there's going to turn out to be a big one that's not on here for some reason but all the big tokens i can think of are actually on this list so this is a new level of security for the holders of these tokens because at this point in the development of all these different little ecosystems there are people holding large amounts of money in some of these coins and up until now they haven't been able to hold them on their ledger Apparently, we are also now getting monthly development updates from Sunday Swap. I've always said that I think Pi is a good communicator, so I'm glad to see these videos popping up. So he started out with a review of the six-month Sunday token yield farming program, which just ended on July 19th. Um, the numbers on this, as they reviewed what, what actually took place during that, uh, that Sunday token yield farming program, the numbers are actually pretty impressive. They had 71,000 lockup events across 25,000 wallets. They've paid out about 57 million Sunday tokens, and there's another 24 million Sunday ready to be claimed. He said there are now 83,000 wallets holding the Sunday token, and they say this makes them second only to the Hosky token at 87,000. On governance, Pi talked about three components a discussion platform for proposals and debate, a secure layer two solution for non-critical decisions, and on-chain smart contract voting for critical decisions like protocol updates. There's already discussion and debate around proposals happening in their Discord. The critical on-chain voting will be accomplished via the Agora governance platform that Liquid has open sourced. They've actually designed their own L2 solution for the non-critical decisions. They wanted it to be secure, third-party, auditable, and free to use with no transaction fees. They also wanted it to be modular so that other projects can use it also. Pi actually showed us the governance portal on screen for this new Layer 2 solution. You use your private key to sign for proposals and to cast your vote in eternal, just like you would in a transaction. But unlike a transaction, it doesn't actually cost you anything to do this. I'm actually really interested to see this governance in Sunday Swap get up and running because it seems like if there's anything that's true about human behavior, it's that humans will always favor what's in their best economic interests first. They'll always vote for what is in their economic best interest first. So as someone who holds Sunday Swap tokens, I'm really curious to see what the community votes on because I have a feeling it's going to be in the best interests of the people holding those tokens. In particular, there's always been one part of this tokenomics page on the Sunday Swap website that's jumped out at me. It's this section right down here, profit sharing. One of the founding principles of the Sunday Swap Protocol is about decentralizing not just access to financial services, but the profits generated from them. While we haven't announced the exact mechanism here, our vision is for the Sunday Swap token to provide access to these decentralized profits. If the Sunday Swap token holders participating in governance are humans like I think they are, I think they might latch on to this kind of idea and make some proposals kind of a, a, around that kind of thing. That'll be interesting. 
In fact, if you go into the Sunday Swap Discord right now into the governance chat, it seems like you can find some discussion in this general direction as recently as July 18th. Full disclosure, as I've said many times, I do hold Sunday Swap tokens. Finally, we saw this mysterious tweet from Ready Player Me related to Pavia. They said, Cardano now compatible with Ready Player Me. Pavia announcement coming soon. You're probably aware that the avatars that will be used in Pavia are Ready Player Me avatars. They posted this graphic now compatible with Cardano. When I cruise over here to Pavia's profile, this is the most recent tweet I can see from July 29th. Goodbye, July. August is a truly mega month for Pavia with our rebrand and new map. RPM, Ready Player Me, Avatar Merch. The first look at a plaza section, PCA load testing and more work on the builder tool, plus some other stuff. Busy but exciting times. I'm excited to see something like this out of Pavia, especially this first look at a section of the plaza. Pavia was really the first metaverse project that launched on Cardano and told us they were actually going to be a metaverse. We had one launch before that that kind of looked like it might be a metaverse and then it launched and it really just looked more like a regular NFT art type project. Then Pavia came along and we knew we were actually going to have a project striving to be a legit metaverse. So I'm excited to see this after all this time with Pavia. This weekend, I did a live stream. If you weren't able to watch it live, it's available for you to watch now. So feel free to cruise over there and watch that live stream. Otherwise, I hope you're starting out a great week and I will talk to you tomorrow.